Hello, welcome to Mr. Tim Check's carpentry class. And today we're going to learn about sheathing. So I'm saying sheathing, not sheathing. Sheath, as in to cover something, like a sheath of a knife. And once you have all your framing done, and it's going you know, to have the bones of the house, you've got to cover it all with your sheathing. And that not only, uh, you can, at that point, you can move your braces because it holds all your walls together and connects everything and locks everything together. All right, um, the walls can be sheathed either laying down or stood up. It does save a lot of labor if the if you can sheath the walls on the ground um, because sheathing the walls while they're standing can be a pain because you're lifting these heavy sheets um, up into the air and having it install it that way. Um, but sometimes if you install it on the ground and you don't have a, uh, a big crew to lift up these big walls with the sheathing already on, it might cause an issue. So you can see here, you know, these guys are kind of not struggling, but it's definitely some effort to get the sheets on while the walls are standing. Now, sometimes you can't avoid the situation when you have to, um, you just have to do so like definitely the peaks of houses and things like that. You just have to get up there and install, you know, kind of like what this guy's doing. You got, he didn't sheet the walls first. So now he's going to sheet the walls, uh, after he framed everything up. So you can either sheet the walls horizontally, which is preferred because it covers more stud area and kind of locks more studs uh, together with one sheet, or you can install them vertically. Um, vertically kind of is more popular nowadays just because of how easy it is, but you can see like here, you know, four foot sheets, you only cover four studs, where, you know, a eight foot sheet's gonna cover eight studs, um, and it's gonna lock eight studs together. So it's like kind of, you know, either ways, uh, depending on how tall your walls and everything like that, it depends. All right, this one thing that is important that you're, is that your sheathing has to cover your uh, mud sill and uh, your rim joists. All right, so it kind of goes all the way down. Okay, depending on what you have there, but it definitely has to cover your mud sill um, and everything like that. Um, and it kind of just locks everything together. So you can see how if you're going to install it first on the ground, you have to account for covering your rim joist plus your mud sill. And it's going to overhang a little bit on your foundation wall. And that's going to lock your wall even more into your uh, floor framing and into the um, foundation. So the actual sheeting itself, if we're talking OSB, the standard sheeting for your uh, outside of your house is seven sixteenths, which is almost a half an inch. Um, and that's just like your standard for more, for higher wind areas, you're going to want to five eighths or even 1932. So the 1932 is pretty heavy. Um, but you could definitely use that just gives you a little bit, uh, extra support. Um, OSB sheathing is installed on the rough side out. All right. Because you want the stamp of everything on the smooth side facing in so the framing inspector can come in before the drywall is hung on the interior and check what was used um, pretty simply. And that's just kind of standard throughout all sheathing throughout your house. Um, also, even though you're not standing on the walls, um, it does pro provide a slip surface when you put your sheathing on the roof. Uh, on the rough side, that's where you have your lines, and that's why it's kind of also facing out. That's why, like, pretty self-explanatory because the lines are supposed to be where the stud locations is. And so, if you line everything up with your framing, uh, you can kind of see here that this line and this line lines up with your 16 on center, and that kind of lines up perfectly. And so, when you're nailing on your sheathing, you can know where your stud is. So this is just telling you the different thicknesses of things. Like I said, the, the standard is 7 16ths. If you really want to go like super heavy, I guess you could do 23, 30 seconds, but this is just as fall, um, as far as OSB thickness. Um, plywood's a little bit different. Uh, 15, 30 seconds is what plywood sheathing is, is rated for. Um, 19, 30 seconds 
uh, is for high wind areas. Um, sheathing is nailed on with eight penny nails, and uh, you're you use um, kind of a pattern of six inches around the perimeter on your studs, and then twelve inches in on in the field. All right, so the field is like the middle of the board, and the edges are where the edges of the board are and where they're getting nailed. When you're cutting out the windows or door openings, there's a couple methods. Uh, one method is, you know, that's tried and true is use a reciprocating saw. So from the inside, you cut, you can see the framing and you can use a reciprocating saw and cut the whole entire window out. Another way to do it is if you can use a circular saw and kind of cut the opening that way. Uh, and then probably the, the newer method is to use a router with a flush trim bit. All right, so this is... Uh, using a circular saw and plunging it out and this is using from the inside a sawzall and cutting this whole window out um, kind of going along the framing and then this way is using that flush trim bit and you're just kind of going you have to drill a hole first just one hole and then this ball bearing rides along your framing and then you can use that <clears throat> you know as your as your uh, method to um, cut out your door or window openings and it's perfect every time when you use the router it's pretty sweet um, you just have to have a good router and a good bit definitely don't want to use a cheap router else it'll burn up because cutting through the sheathing sometimes is a little rough set it to the right depth and just let it let it run and it's pretty good this guy definitely has a heavy duty router and he's cutting out these windows it looks great all right, house wrap. Um, house wraps one of my least favorite things to install on a house because it takes a lot of time if you're going to do it right. And there's no point in just kind of uh, doing it wrong because then it's not going to work and it was just a waste of time anyways. So um, house wrap is this protective thin layer of plastic that prevents cold air and, and um or warm air from penetrating the interior of the house. Now, it's more like putting on a jacket, all right, um, and to keep your house warm, all right, or keep whatever temperatures inside the house. It is semi-waterproof, but it's not like really something that you would say that like waterproofs your house. It's more like a protective layer. Um, obviously, let's the house not get uh, the house framing uh, it's a protective barrier but I would not say it's like a foolproof waterproofing thing um, to your house but it does help uh, obviously when you frame it up before you have your finish material like siding or brick on it um, it's gonna be siding um, if you're gonna put the house wrap on but anyways uh, more more prevents the air than water but it should prevent a little bit of water uh, you, anytime you have seams, you need to put your Tyvek tape, as we call it, but it's just kind of house wrap tape. And you like tape all your seams up. That's what I mean. If you don't tape all your seams up and everything's not locked in there, it's not going to work that well. All right, there's an entire house. Now, if you install up, the lettering upside down, it's not the end of the world, but it definitely looks better when you install everything the right side up so it kind of makes you look like you know what you're doing and you're taking your time um so to fasten down this house wrap you use something called uh button caps or plastic cap nails they're ring shank usually galvanized and has this plastic cap and it holds the um house wrap on this looks like really nice house wrap here by stinger and they came out with this plastic cap nailer and that's automatic because it does, there's a lot of nails involved. Now you can staple your plastic cap, uh, you can staple down your house wrap, but it doesn't hold as well. And if it gets wet, it rusts pretty fast, just common staples. So your plastic cap nails are definitely your better option. Um, and you can kind of see it, you know, it's kind of a pain in the butt once you get to a certain height here. So something that's newer 
and it kind of works really well is this uh, zip system and it might be a little bit more money and a I, but I think it saves you time, and I think it's just a better system than house wrap for the reason um, uh, just because of how it goes is that you're sealing up every single uh, joint that you have. So you already have um, the, you know, the coating. Uh, there's no house wrap involved. The coating on this zip sheathing, all right, already has kind of like a protective layer on it. And then you have to use a zip flashing tape on every single joint, which really seals everything up nice. So there's really no air movement or anything like that, or even moisture movement, because this zip um, tape is something um, awesome. I mean, it's super sticky, works really well. So this is kind of the future here, and you kind of roll the zip tape on. And it's pretty simple instructions, but it's just the future, to be honest. So this is just a video. Lowe's actually did a pretty good job. Uh, Home Depot doesn't sell the zip system, at least here in Pittsburgh. But Lowe's does, and this is a pretty good video of what they do, and it shows how to do it. And so, all right, that's um, wall, uh, wall sheeting and house wrap.